All right, on the bench today, out of a 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan with a 3.3, we have the four-speed front-wheel drive called the 41TE or the A604. So what's going on with this is we got to check engine light. We did do a code scan, but we got to check engine light with a P0740 code and the car will not pass inspection. So the converter is pretty much no good on this. Um, it was probably actually starting to clog the filter because we did hear like a winding noise. I never drove the car. Um, I think it, for the most part I probably drove okay. But when we have, we took the transmission out, we put our wine flush machine on it and the filter probably for the first two or three times that we checked it was loaded with, with click material. So, and he had the pan down too. I guess he, the, the installer dropped the pan. I don't know, maybe he just wanted to drain it or something. So the pan has been dropped. I do have the side cover off here because I wanted to order enough parts to build this over the weekend and I want to make sure it had the uh, the retainers, the bat wings as they call them for the cross pin, which I figured it would, but hey, I just wanted to check. So the deal with this is, I get a call from one of my wholesale accounts, and I don't know, maybe he didn't have the car there, but he said, hey, 2010 Grand Caravan, how much does the transmission cost? I says, is it a 3.6? And he goes, I believe it is, yeah, yeah. I said, well, it's a 62 TE, it's, you know, X amount. He goes, all right, well, the guy wants to fix it. I said, well, I have a transmission on the shelf. I have a fresh core. Let me build it and then have him bring the car because it'll keep, you know, the downtime just to a couple of days. Then we just take one out, put one in, and he'll be, we'll do the quick learn, whatever we got to do. He'll be on his way in, in, you know, you bring it on a, a, a Wednesday, it'll be done on a Thursday. He goes, oh, great, awesome, because downtime will be less. Good. Okay, so he brings it in, leaves the car. Uh, the guy brought it in, you know, himself, just to make it quicker, just to get the car here. And, uh, you know, he leaves, and then we start checking it out, and then the manager comes to me and says, it's a 604. I said, oh. I said, what's the engine size? He says, uh, he said, it's a 3.3. I said, oh. So, hey, I got a 62 DE for stock. So, you know, that all went out the window. But I'm going to try to get this done as fast as I can because he does need the car. He uses it. And uh, um, I think his inspection is like a couple of months out because he just couldn't get the car in here for us to do. So, you know, we're going to open this in the morning. Really don't think we're going to find too much. You know, like I said, it did sound like felt it was a little buzzing. Maybe overdrive clutch or something. Maybe, you know, singed or whatever. But I didn't look at CBIs, which is clutch volume index. I didn't look at that. I really didn't look at anything because probably for about two hours, I was caught up with all the work. I said, wow, this is great. I'm caught up. And then after that, forget it. I think the other day, we probably had about 10 tow trucks in here dropping cars. And today was, you know, wild, insane. So kind of back to square one again. We just got an accurate. And I says, hey, I'm going to need to go for two weeks, my friend. And he says, all right, whatever. So he wants me to, you know, he wants us to do it, so it's here. So I'm uh, all backed up once again. Uh, all right, so with that, we're going to tear this down tomorrow morning and see what we find. Uh, it's, it's getting a little late. I got to do a couple of things. If I have time, we can start, you know, doing a couple of things, but if not, it's going to be tomorrow morning. Uh, and I have most of my parts coming to try to get this done over the weekend. So with that, I'll catch up with you guys in the morning and we'll go ahead and tear this down. All right, back with you this morning. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna get the input and output speed sensors out. We're gonna take the solenoid pack off. Then we'll probably pop the diff out and then just continue with the tear down. So let's get these out. Looks like somebody may have changed the output speed sensor at one point.
All right, so here are the two sensors. This is your input speed sensor. This is your output speed sensor. All right, let's do the solenoid pack. Three bolts. We wash this up in the tank, that'll soften it up your belt and get that no problem. Alright, so I got the cover off again I just want to make sure that um, the back wings were there for the cross pin. Alright, so now we're going to get the bolts out, 13 millimeter on both sides. So this is what I was checking for these here. Just want to make sure they were on there, which I'm sure they were because that's a 2010. You know, the earlier ones don't have that, but you can get them and uh, install them. All right, let me get this cover, get this cover off back here. Since we have this off, let's take this uh, take this bracket off here that keeps these bolts from turning, keeps the, the large nut from turning. I'm sorry, the the um, yeah the bracket keeps the large nut from turning.
15. Let me just find my gun. These are little shorties. And then here is the bracket that keeps that from turning, so you just put it on. And then you put this on in the two bolts and then the tamps up. Okay. Alright, let's get these bolts out. Slide hammer for uh, to get the pump out. Okay. Pump with the bearing. Put drum. Which we'll take a look at. And let's just get the sun gear out here. You got a four tailed washer. Here. And let's get the little sun gear with another bearing there. Okay. Now let me get the snap ring that holds the apply uh makes the piston in with the uh, second and fourth clutch. off. Now to get the valve body off on these transmissions as well as like 42 RLE and 42 LE, you gotta have it the you gotta have it positioned in low or it will not come out. It's fairly clean, but again, when we put our hot flush on it, the thing was, the thing was loaded. So let's position the shifter to low. And that's probably park. Yeah. And this is park. So we're going to go the opposite way. 
Okay. The risen low. So you gotta clean sometimes the uh, the shaft because that gets all you know. I sanded it down a little bit, see if it would come out a little easier. This valve body. this is this shifter here. And I tried to clean it as best I could, but I guess it wasn't good enough. All right. I'm going to get a socket and just see if I can hit it out the rest of the way. Normally I don't have this problem. So let's get these accumulators out. So this one here has one spring, and this one here has two springs. That's usually the way it is. All right, now we're going to get this one out down here. That actually has a molded uh, cap on it, molded rubber cap on it. So we're going to get the snap ring out. Okay, there is the snap ring. And we can 
just pull the cap off here. So Mold I have a new one of these that come with the banner kits. And then this piston actually is in the opposite way. So these the springs are facing up, this the spring face. You put the spring in first versus the piston first. Okay, and this also has two springs in it. Okay. Now let's get the here is bypass valve. Typical uh I'm gonna be changing that since this converter up there. There is a check valve in here and a lot of times the check valve can stick, you know, because all the crap from the converter is in. There's the 2-4 return spring, the applied plate piston, molded piston. Alright, this is going to be changed. Get the uh, clutches and steels out. The 2-4 steels, I like to change. I mean, these are good, but I like the, sometimes you get a bit of a crappy one-two shift. So I always put new in. All right. Well, that's these. Now we got to get the intermediate plate or that pressure plate out that goes in between the low reverse and two four clutches. Where the end is. Right there. Right, let's see how we're going to do this. I'm going to probably have to pick this snap ring get behind it. Okay. Here's the snap ring. Now, let's get the plate out. So, just say, for instance, this snap ring was broken, you'd have to measure the thickness of this plate, and you gotta buy it as a set. The same when we go through the input drum. These go together. On the, uh, some reason on the 62 TEs, you could just get the snap ring. But on this one, you cannot. Okay. I'm going to take the low reverse clutch out. There is another snap ring, not as heavy. Is that a fine wind? Okay, here it is. That should come right out. Okay. All right. Now we can take the Plan it out. We've got to get this park here out, but we're not going to do that. Yet. I can't, you won't be able to get the low reverse piston out without taking that park assembly. I'm going to take the gears off of the back, get knock that out, get the piston out, finish stripping this down. Alright, so this should be an inch and a half.
All right, so let's get that out. Spacer that goes in between, and here is your planet. Okay, that's what the output speed sensor reads here. It's also your part here. Right now, this one, I'm going to leave. Is a 32. Yes. Let me just get it set up, I'll be right back. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that gear off. is the spacer in between the gear and the pinion. All right. Now let's get the park gear out. Let's get the low reverse piston out. I'll see what we can do with this. Uh, I'm going to get the snap ring out. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. These are the snap ring pliers that you use for that. Sometimes it just doesn't come right out, but let's do this first. So we're going to knock the one rod right out, the other rod right out. One will come out easy, one will come out a little tighter because there's a cap behind it. Let's bring this back down. So one we can just push right out. get something for that. Give me one second. Okay. There's a cap. Well, it's just gonna come out. Okay, there's that. That new one will come in the uh, overhaul kit. Here is 
is this. Take that out the rest of the way. Okay, so now we can get the low first piston out. So there's the Belleville Swing with a pretty heavy stamp ring. I just take my stamp ring pliers, try to get it started, and maybe you can take a seal puller and then just pull the stamp ring out. Sometimes it will just come, come out. But to put it back together, you know, of course you got to depress that spring. Here it is. Here is the return spring. Get the piston out, which is a molded piston. It's going to be changed, and then we got to get the apply plate out. That is a, a Torque 25. Three of them. A new plate normally comes in the overhaul kits. I have to look to see if I have one. I have a few of them new, but if you don't have one, you just got to be careful and use these over again. When it was a little tough getting parts uh, a year or so ago, they didn't put these in the kits anymore. And I had a few which I used and I didn't have any, so I had to use them over again. But it, it worked out okay, just, you know, I'm going to try not to distort it. Put a new gasket, you're usually good to go. There's little 25 torque bolts there, little screws. One more. This out. Gasket, there's a gasket that's on it. Gasket's changed. This will come out. There's the plate. So we'll put that aside. Just gotta wait and see if I have one. Well, actually, no, I do have them. I have them separate. I have a few of them left. Alright, so now we got a snap ring in here. Again, these are not so easy to come out. Let me see if I can get it started. Spacer. We have the race with an O-ring on it and the pinion. All right, so the case is stripped. So I'm going to get rid of the case, and then we're going to open up basically the input drum and the pump. We can take another look at the valve body uh, and finish it up. So give me a few. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's take a look at the input drum. We got the reverse clutch. On Okay. All right, now we're going to get the plate out for the overdrive clutch. So 
this here is the flat snap ring, and underneath that is a wavy snap. So we'll take the plate out. Okay, this looks good. What we can do is just take the hub out, get ready to pull the clutches out. All right, these actually look pretty good. <clears throat> now here we have um, a couple of washers. Okay. So it goes through the hub, you know, kind of locks in. This washer will lock in, you know, like that. So we got two pieces. All right, the underdrive hub. We have a five tail washer on that. These bushings in here tend to, there's two bushings in here, and Sonic makes a one piece bushing and they tend to go bad and that'll shorten the life of the overdrive clutch or always change them. These aren't too bad, but as a standard rebuild procedure, the bushings in here get changed uh, with a one-piece bushing. Okay, I'm gonna get this bearing out. Now we're gonna get the wavy snap ring out that the plate sits on. We've got about um, six snap rings in this input drum. All right, now we have another one of those heavy snap rings that's beveled. And this is the one that has to match the plate. So let's take that out. So if this snap ring is broken or the, the plate is no good, you really got to get a max set. Okay. So this would have to go together. All right. I'm going to take an underdrive friction out, and then we're going to get the other snap ring that that way it sits on. Kind of like the same setup as in the case. this snap ring. I'll take the snap ring. We'll take this whole drum apart. All right, so just give me one second, and I'm going to go over to the press. I'll do that and be right back. Okay, so we got that up. So here is the snap ring. Balance piston, which is going to be changed. Snap ring. We apply for the balance, we apply plate for the balance piston. All right, so we have, this is a little screwed up here. Okay, it's like smooth here, but it's not here. So I'm gonna change this piston. And this is pretty common to happen. And that's no good. And over here is smooth, so. There's two different ones, half inch tool and three quarter inch tool. This is the half inch, the most common one is the half inch tool. I have a few of these on the shelf that I keep. All right, the spray. Snap ring, balance piston, change it. Now we got another snap ring to come out. Okay, and with this one, 
you got to look at this because there's a little bevel on the inside of this when there's not on this side <clears throat> and you have to have this facing up if you put this in wrong as soon as you hit driver reverse the sucker's going to pop out and it's not going to move so just make sure you put this stop ring in correctly with a little bevel on the inside here faces up stop ring will go right in Is what your input speed sensor reads. All right, also, this is the same as these are 62TE. Bunch of seals on here, I'll get off. Okay, and then we'll get the two pistons apart. All right, you got a seal in here, you take off. You got the return spring back here, just check it out, make sure it's not cracked. You got a little orifice screen that you want to make sure you, can, you hold it up to the light after it's clean. You should see a little pinhole, you know, light coming through. If not, just make sure you do, uh, you clean it until you do see it, because that's a bleed orifice. Those bolts out to their teens. And you know what? I got a actually got a chrome socket on this one. Good. We've got the rings here. Going to be changed. Make sure inside here there are no ring grooves. Uh, when you, you have a bushing down in here, okay, all the way down. When that bushing goes bad, it may stop running true, and then you're going to have your input shaft that goes in there. Uh, make some ring grooves in there. You're going to have to change this pump. Last couple of them. Uh, I just did um, probably in a row. About 762 TEs. I got like, geez, one, one was in a, a Volkswagen uh, Routan, which is kind of like a Dodge Caravan, and the other six were caravans and town and countries, and got them all in within three days of each other. One, I got three in one day, and then another one in, and then two days later, another one, but I'm all caught up with the 62 TEs, and and I thought, again, this was a 62 TE when he told me the engine size, so I built the transmission. And now it's just going to be a stock unit, which is fine, because I'm sure we'll get one in next week. All right, here is the... Okay, this looks good. Going to change the pump bushing. Didn't have a 740 code, but that was due to a bad converter. That clutch is gone, because like I said, it was all, all within the trans. So this is all good. Pieces here, clutch material on these gears. All right, so take a look at the valve body. So this is a like an 07, 06 and up. So this does have the variable line pressure solenoids. Here is the EPC. Here is the transducer. I'm still waiting for those. The extra harness. Uh, your accumulator. One two accumulator in here. Uh, transmission range switch. Transmission range switches here. Here's the extra harness again for the VLP solenoids. Accumulator here. And uh, I'm going to clean this, uh, you know, I'm going to take this whole thing apart, take this whole clean up on the wire wheel and just drop right back in. You got a seal on here as well. And you got a seal here for your second and fourth clutch. New one comes in the overhaul kit. And I guess that's about it on the 604. So we're just pretty much dealing with a bad converter, but again, there were signs of that screen starting to clog. I guess mainly because he let it go so long. He 
this thing is like a few months overdue for inspection. I guess they were trying to, you know, clearing the code, seeing if they can get the car inspected without uh, doing anything, but the light, because the converter was so bad, the light probably kept coming on within a day or so, and the monitors were not set. So it's here now, we're doing the unit, and we'll fix it all up, get it back in the car. Uh, pretty much I'm waiting for some parts. <clears throat> I do have some stuff here. You know, the banner kit, um, you know, it's a... Uh, Banner kit was a couple of days out. I couldn't wait that long, so you know I have uh, my frictions here. I have all my pistons here. Are my two four steels. All right, here is the the overhaul kit, and it does come with the new low reverse supply plate. So that's good. And I'm gonna get my bushings and other things. Solenoid pack. The VLP solenoids I'm waiting for. They're coming. U UPS. Uh, I guess that's about it on this 2010 Dodge Caravan with a 3.3. Uh, 740 code was the main problem. Uh, so again, just going to do a full rebuild with banner kit, new uh, VLP solenoids, new solenoid pack, rebuild converter, uh, new 24 steels, bushings. Back in the car and uh, uh, get him on his way. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.